Hey everyone, Jordan Smith with Voight Smith Innovation. Today we're going to talk about a hot topic and that is setting up your brine operation. Uh, as you can see we're here in our shop, uh, this is actually our wash bay and we have our batch brine making system here. Um, so obviously step one to setting up your brine operation is to have a brine maker. This unit has a stainless steel mixing hopper which is what's next to me here. And then behind the mixing hopper there's a 1100 gallon poly overflow tank. And that's your batch uh, where you actually pull your brine out of when it's finished being mixed. And we'll get into that later. Um, basic infrastructure needs to feed this system are 220 volt electric, 30 amp service, single phase. Uh, you also need a good water source. We do not have a great water source here because we're on a well. So behind me, this tall white tank is actually a float water tank. And what that means is it's a 3,000 gallon tank that holds water. It's got a float valve in the top. Uh, and the brine maker actually pulls from that the well feeds that. So as soon as that tank level drops down below the very top fill line, that'll start refilling automatically. What that does is it buys us time and between batches, it's replenishing and that way we can keep moving and keep making brine. We would always recommend that you mix your brine indoors. Uh, we get asked a lot about if people can make their brine outdoors, maybe they don't have enough space inside. The answer is, could you make brine outside? Yes. Uh, however, you're going to lose a lot of efficiencies because you're going to always have to drain your system. You're going to have to flush your plumbing out uh, to make sure things don't freeze up while it's sitting. So we have ours in a heated wash bay, like I mentioned. Uh, that being said, all of our storage tanks are outside. Now, we also get asked a lot, can I have my storage tanks outside? The answer is absolutely yes. We're in southern Minnesota. We often get temperatures below negative 20, even negative 30 Fahrenheit. And in the 10 years we've been using liquids, we've never actually had one of our outdoor tanks freeze up. Now, that being said, if you have indoor space for tanks, it's never going to be a bad thing to have your tanks in a controlled and, and climate controlled environment, I should say. Uh, not necessarily that the liquid's gonna work better uh, if, they're, if it's stored indoors, but sometimes if you're using certain additives, you can get a little bit of instability if your uh, liquids you're mixing are very cold. Obviously, to load your brine maker, you're gonna need some kind of loader or machine. Here, we're using a Cat 906 with a one and a half yard bucket. However, depending on your brine maker, you may need to use something smaller, um, or maybe you have a bigger brine maker and you can use a bigger loader bucket. This works well for our application. Now, another important factor is you're gonna wanna have your salt storage nearby. So ours is right across our parking lot here, which you'll see. Uh, you're not gonna want your salt storage to be you know, a thousand feet away from your brine maker because otherwise you're gonna be driving back and forth constantly. Another really important factor is to make sure you have good quality salt. We have Cargill salt from Minnesota. Cargill salt's available in a few other markets as well, but it's nice. The gradation is very fine. Uh, there's some granules in there that are larger, which is okay, but the finer the gradation, the faster you're gonna mix. More importantly than the gradation though is the purity and quality. Uh, the Cargill salt's about 98% pure. We've seen other salt uh, uh, suppliers that have salt that's 85 to 90% pure. The problem with that is it's gonna plug up your brine mixing system. And once it plugs that up, it's going to overflow into your batch tank. That's going to get into your storage tanks. That's going to get into your spray systems. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. So if you're using a salt that does not have a high purity level right now, we'd recommend that you find a better source for at least your brine making salt. So we talked about how our storage tanks here are outdoors. The way we get our plumbing to our storage tanks outdoors. So we run the brine out the wall through our manifold system here. We actually have underground plumbing running all the way to our tanks. Typically speaking, it's gonna be better if you just have your plumbing going right out the wall and the storage tanks are right outside this wall. However, in our application, that wasn't an option. Uh, we would always suggest plumbing your tanks in with some kind of flexible plumbing above ground. The reason for this is we've heard of people plumbing tanks in with PVC, the tanks shift or expand or contract, uh, and then what happens is the PVC can crack and then obviously you're gonna lose all of your brine and product that you've blended. So we recommend Tiger Flex hose or Canaflex hose like you see on this manifold system here. Now, if you feel overwhelmed by this plumbing, don't worry. The reason we have all this is because we're running dual pumps, not a conventional setup. But we run a lot of gallons of liquid, so we need the extra capacity. So now that we've gone over the basics of setting up your brine operation, we're actually going to show you how to mix a batch of brine in a batch brine system. Now, keep in mind, in a batch system like this, your first batch is going to be different than all the others. And that's because your mixing tank, which is this tank here, is going to be completely empty when you set up a new unit. Now you'll see in this video that this already has water in it, and that's because we've already used this system to make batches of brine. So assuming that this is not not your first batch, uh, this, this tank already is full of water. The back tank of finished brine has already been pumped out and we're ready to start our next batch. So the first thing we're gonna do is load our salt.
So remember when you're loading your salt in the batch brine system, you don't need to get the exact amount of salt in the hopper. What you want to do is put as much salt in here as possible without it actually overflowing into the back tank so that your brine mixes the most efficiently. So all our salt's in, we're going to turn on our water. Because we have a float tank and this manifold system here, we're going to turn on this valve, which is hooked up to our water tank, and we're going to run our water fill through our agitation. So this agitation line's already open. So now when I turn the pump on, it's going to be agitating and filling at the same time. So now that our brine has reached 23.3%, it's time to pump it out. Typically, we won't turn the pump off when we're switching between agitation and pump out, but for the sake of the video, the pump is pretty loud, so we turned it off. This brine maker is really simple. All you do to switch from agitation to pump out is switching these two valves. Now our brine will be pumping out to our storage tanks. And a little bit of a pro tip, when you get comfortable making brine, you can actually get a couple hundred extra gallons of capacity out of your batch simply by loading salt while the system's pumping out. What that's going to do is it's going to displace water in this mix tank, overflow into the back tank, which is your batch tank, and that's going to go out to your tanks. So now that our brine is pumped out, we've added our salt for our next batch, we're ready to do the next one. And the way you can do that is really simple. Again, switch the valves back, pump out valve turns off, agitation valve turns on. Our manifold has the water plumbed in, we're going to turn that on. Again, the pump would normally still be running, but I turned it off for the video, so here we go. Another great feature of this system is that not only can you use it to mix your brine, you can also use it as your central fill station for your trucks. All we have to do on this system is completely isolate the brine making system. That way we can use the pump just for filling our trucks. Now with this manifold down here, uh, we have the option to fill with brine, additive, or water. Uh, obviously we're not going to fill with water because we're doing de-icing. So this is our brine valve. We're going to open this up and turn on our pump. Now we're filling our truck with salt brine. We have a digital readout here. Uh, that'll allow you to do precise blends. So let's say you have a thousand gallon tank, you want to do an 80-20 blend, 80% salt brine, 20% additive. We'd fill this up until this red 800. Then we switch our valves from brine to additive and put in the last 200 gallons of additive. Nice thing of having this digital readout is you're always going to get an accurate mix. So now that our manifold's set up to pump in brine, we're ready to fill our truck. You'll see this uh, fill hose has a simple cam lock on it. You'll see it also has a valve, which may seem redundant because there's a valve on the brine making system. But the reason we do that is so when we disconnect our hose, we don't leak all the extra contents of the line down the floor drain. Open our valves. Our meter is set, ready to go for salt brine. Turn on the switch, and the truck's filling. Maintenance on a brine plant like this is actually very simple. If you have good clean salt, you should only have to clean out the mixing hopper one to two times per year, depending on how much volume you're mixing. That being said, we have heard of companies that have very poor quality salt that are having to clean out their system every three to four batches. If that's happening to you, you need to find a new, sor uh, new source for salt. Um, the system does have a bottom clean out port. You can see underneath there, there's a three inch valve. You can hook a three inch line to that and flush it into a loader bucket or whatever works best for you. Um, the pump has two grease circs on it, one for the fan side, one for the impeller side. Uh, follow the factory recommended intervals on that. Typically, we only have to grease ours two to three times a year. Uh, and then, obviously, this is all stainless steel and poly, so there's not a huge concern with corrosion, but it's never a bad thing just to wash the system down once in a while. And then, most importantly of anything, uh, make sure that when you're putting the brine maker into storage or when, it's, when you're going into the summer months, you flush out the plumbing and especially flush out the pump. The problem is if you leave salt brine in your pump, what will happen is the water will evaporate out of the salt brine, it'll leave the dry salt behind, and salt does this weird thing called salt creep. It'll actually creep through and into the seal of the pump. That'll get into the motor, and when you get back in the fall uh, to use your brine maker again, your motor's going to be seized up. So in summary, setting up a brine plant and brine operation like this can be a little bit expensive and time consuming initially. That being said, we do see that setting up a brine plant has one of the fastest payoffs of anything you can do in your snow business. Typical brine resale markets are selling brine for more than 60 cents a gallon. Whereas with your own system like this, even with salt, water, labor, depreciation, and even your initial setup cost, you're gonna be under 20 cents a gallon. So if you take that, 
40 cent minimum margin per gallon, you can see that setting up even a $40,000 brine plant is gonna pay itself off very quickly in just 100,000 gallons. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a call if you have any questions. We're always willing to help you set up your brine operation, even if you don't have a brine maker from Voidsmith Innovation. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. Give us a call, check out our website.